Welcome back to another episode of the Dunk Ball Dudes! <laughs> If you're new here, we actually post videos every Monday, 12 p.m. AEDT. AEDT. Am I really fucking recording? Today we're sharing seven basic strategies that every beginner needs to know. We're going to be breaking down the strategies into three categories: offensive, defensive, and finishes. Us here at the Dodgeball Dudes want to make you become a better dodgeballer. So follow these tips and enjoy. Offensive. Offensive is when you have the ball advantage and your team has to throw. So the first most basic offensive call is doubles. When two adjacent ball carriers throw together. Doubles is normally a four ball play and you're releasing two balls. So for example, if we call the left double, the players in position one and two will throw. But if we call a right double, the players in five and six will throw. A center double would be the players in the position three and four would throw. By the end of the play, you have two balls left to pass to the wings. Be sure to time your throws with your teammates. You don't want to call a double and have two single balls being thrown. Time it properly, work as a team. When we started playing dodgeball together, we would do a countdown right before we did our play. Yeah. So we would go three, two, one. And then that timer would be a good way for us to just learn how to be on time with each other. Yes. But then as you develop as a team, you don't want to use a timer because it will give away when you're gonna throw, obviously. Yeah. Unless you play around with that as well. Yeah, I think it's a good way to start and learn your teammates wind ups and throws. And that way, when you do go to time it with your teammates, you can account for each other's wind ups and follow throughs and stuff like that as well. Splits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually so surprised if you actually did it. A split is a four ball play where alternating players will throw at a target. For example, if we call left split, then players one and three will throw at a target. If we call right split, then players four and six will throw at a target. Splits are a great way to add variety to your calls. If you're always doing doubles, then you'll start becoming predictable. Wings on. Wings are the players positioned on the extreme left and right of the court. The formula for making offensive calls is position, keyword, target number. For example, let's say wings on three, the wings will target their third player. Some other examples are left double three, right split one. Defensive. Defensive calls is when your team is at a disadvantage and the other teams turn to throw. So you make a call, you're ready for their approach, and then you have a counterattack to their offensive play. Hold. Hold is a defensive call where you provide support for your teammates without releasing the ball. If you're told to hold, then you have the ball there, you're pressuring, you're faking because your teammate might throw. So if I call for my teammate to hold, you can look at your teammate, you, you, you go hold like this, and it'll pressure for me, and I may or may not throw. If there's an opportunity for me to take someone out because Peter has opened an opportunity for me, then I'll take it. Now, when we call soak, the difference between soak and hold is when soak is called, you don't release the ball, you just hold onto the ball, try and stay alive. You're just absorbing all of the balls released from the opponents. After that, you just reset and you re-strategize and you make a call. The benefit of soaking is that you can conserve a lot of energy. So instead of holding where you're still pressuring and faking, soak is a good call to use, especially when you just had like a really offensive rally and you just wanna just reset. So just call soak, step back, relax, absorb the balls, stay alive and re-strategize with an offensive call. Mm -hmm. Counter rush. A counter rush is a defensive call where after the enemies have thrown, your team retaliates by charging towards the enemies and one or more players are assigned to throw back. So for example, if I said left rush, after the other team has thrown the ball, my left wing will rush up and throw the ball at whatever target. If we specify the target by a number, then they will throw at the target. For me as my job, I should be pressuring to set them up. You're not just standing there, you're up there to support them and help confuse the other players to disguise who's gonna actually throw the ball. And why do we do a counter rush? Why? 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 Because after the enemies have thrown, we have the advantage, so we have to throw. So might as well do a counter rush and run them down whilst they're on the back pedal. Finishes. Finish him. Finish him. Finish him, daddy. Finisher is when you're trying to close up the set. Whether it be one player remaining or more than one player remaining, finisher means you want to finish that set. You want to win that set. So there are two calls that we're going to provide for you to finish the set. The first one is seesaw. Typically a two versus one scenario, a seesaw is a play made to finish the set. Players alternate up and down the wing to apply pressure. Once the enemy throws, the player not being targeted counters the enemy. Let's say I'm the last player and they call a seesaw on me. I want to aim at the left person, but then the right person comes closer to me. So then I choose to aim at the right person, but then the left person comes closer to me. So you're at this standoff of who do you throw at? Because whoever you do throw at, the other person will punish you. So that's why seesaw is effective. And the last finisher play is hard carry. 
the hard carry is a defensive call to potentially take out two players. With possession of one to three balls, as they throw multiple balls, timed perfectly, you release a ball and position yourself for a catch. Basically, you throw at the person in front of you and as you throw, the momentum of your body moves this way and you position for the person trying to punish you and you aim for a catch in your catching zone. So you're prepared for that punish, but you actually have played that person because they thought it was an opportunity to punish you. If you're left-handed, consider throwing the left person first and positioning yourself to the right person. You yes. don't want to throw and then have to turn back, yes. go for a catch. Yes. Bonus tips. After the call is done, there will be counter rushes. There's going to be an aftermath of chaos and you need to be ready for it. How do you be ready for it? Ball counting, court awareness, player awareness. There's so many little aspects that you need to consider in the moment. If you're on the offensive and you just made a play, they're gonna be on the defensive and they have already strategized to do something to you. So just be ready for that. Just think that they're about to do something and that's the first step to dealing with an aftermath. Also remember who's got a ball, who's got the advantage after balls have been thrown, how many balls are on each side. Shaggers is also really important too. Teamwork not only off on court, but off court as well to dominate on court. You might have the majority balls and it's your turn to throw, but if you're not aware of that, then that's a waste of time. Your opponents may be recovering from a previous play. If you know that it's your throw, then you can take advantage of that moment. Otherwise, you might have to reset, count, and then realize, oh, it's our throw again. So you have to walk back, walk up. I guess it comes more with experience. Yes, it does. The more advanced players know how to ball count very quickly to the point where if balls are thrown, the mats is in your head, like plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two. Quick mats. To be on top of ball counting is on another level. And if you're the person to call out hold, on a five or six balls, like if you have five, six balls, you hold, you're the MVP. Don't be that loose cannon. <laughs> You know who you are. <laughs> Don't get tunnel visioned. Tunnel vision is when you're just so focused, you forget about everything else around you. You have no more control on the ball. So wherever it goes, just let it go. After you throw, get ready to dodge straight away. The number one rule overall, staying alive. Staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> staying alive is priority. Save your teammates. If you have a ball, you have a responsibility. Save your teammates, save yourself. Ultimately, stay alive. And what you want, is maximum value. Oh, Max baby. value. Go for low risk, high reward plays. Try to take out more than one player before you die. That's when the value's out. Taking out one for one isn't worth it. You have to take out two. If you take out three, bruh, you've done your job. MVP. MVP. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future videos. If you want to see our previous video, the 1v1 video right here, that's an awesome video. And if you want to see what YouTube recommends, then click the one right here. I'm Phil. And I'm Pete. And we out.